In this video, we're going to cover some of the new features that came out as part of Power BI's February 2025 update, including things like the Copilot updates, conditional formatting support for visual calculations, and the new monitoring hub for semantic models. All of that and more, so without further ado, let's jump in. Before we start, there are a few general updates that you need to be aware of. First, you have to make sure that you're using the 64-bit version of Power BI Desktop to receive updates and support. And if you're using the Copilot feature in Report View for Power BI Desktop, you need to ensure that you have the February 2025 version or later, because after April, the Copilot feature may not work as intended unless you have updated your Power BI Desktop. Copilot is now supported via Power BI mobile apps for tablets, so iPads and Android tablets. Like in the Power BI service, you have a button which will bring up the Copilot pane that can give you summaries and further insights to your data. This is useful if you have dashboards that is dense with data and you want a quick way to summarize your insights in natural language or charts. When Copilot generates an answer, you can now get more detailed information about how Copilot gets to this answer, such as information about what data is used and what filters are applied. This allows you to examine and verify that Copilot is using the right columns, for example, when it's doing its calculations. Along with this, there's also a shortcut to the Explore Your Data feature on any of the visuals that the Copilot generates. Clicking this button will bring up the Explore experience, basically like a lightweight version of Power BI Desktop, which lets you customize things like what charts to use, columns and filters. This feature allows you to do some ad hoc exploration to help you understand your data better. Conditional formatting is now supported for visual calculations. This means that if you're using visual calculations, you can now apply conditional formatting to them, like adding data bars, adjusting background colors, font colors, similar to normal fields that you would use. You can now also use visual calculation fields as part of rules for other fields when you're using conditional formatting to them. In this example, we have a fiscal quarter field, and when we apply conditional formatting to this field, under the what field should we base this on, you should be able to choose the visual calculation as a rule so that you can change the color uh, or the properties of a field based on the value of that visual calculation. In this specific example, the visual calculation field is hidden, which is actually a nice trick. And it's another simpler option that you can use outside of creating measures for simple customizations like this. The One Lake catalog is now available within Microsoft Teams. Now, a while back, Microsoft made the Power BI experience available within Teams, which meant that Power BI is integrated within Teams so that you can do things like viewing your Power BI reports without needing to come out of the Teams experience. This month, this experience is further extended by making the One Lake catalog available as well which basically lets you discover the data that you have within your Microsoft ecosystem. This is a good way to make data accessible to more people within your organization. The monitoring hub is now available from Fabric or Power BI service experiences. You can see it as an option on the left panel. This allows you to monitor refreshes on various items in your Power BI service like semantic models, data flows, pipelines, and more. So previously, if you wanted to monitor a refresh history of a semantic model, for example, you need to go to that semantic model and click refresh history. Now, while this experience is not necessarily broken, it's a bit limiting because the refresh history that you see is not so detailed and it's only specific to one semantic model. This new monitoring hub allows you to monitor all the refreshes across your whole environment. It even lets you customize which fields you see, or add filters to see refreshes based on item type or status or any other fields that are available if you wanted to narrow down your search. Clicking on any of the semantic models in this page will bring you to the refresh detail page, which is a cleaner view of the refresh history. This view gives you useful information such as refresh attempts, duration, and execution details with some more detailed information if you need it. What's interesting is that the refresh details are accessible via API, which means that if you wanted your own monitoring tool, you can tap into it using the get refresh history API and connect it to your own custom application. 
APIs are a standardized way that you can interface with online services like Power BI, which can let you see or do things that you're usually not able to using just the Power BI service. So if you want to learn more about how to use APIs and how to use them with Power BI, I covered it in a separate video. So go check that out if you haven't yet. And that's really it for this video. So as usual, I didn't cover everything that was in this month's update. So if you want to learn more about everything else, I'll leave a link to the full blog post in the description box below. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so that you do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at any of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.